work on some concrete problem to see, uh, you know, the brute force method. So let's apply it to another computing problem. Yeah. That's not a new problem. Our old problem, problem number four, sort an array. So here we revisit it. Yeah. The problem, so we're familiar with this problem. Let us solve it in a different way. Hey, different way, second way. The first time we solve it using that uh, selection sort, selection sort, all right? Here, we want to take a different way. But you may have this question, why we need to solve it another time, right? So usually think about your own experience. If you already have some solution, on a particular problem, usually most of the people, they do not bother to find a different solution, right? Yeah. They feel it's done. <laughs> okay, why? Yeah, but here, yeah, in this class, for this particular problem, sort and array number four, we will solve it many many times no. about six or seven times that many okay. yeah so we will do at least six times no. that many times six different solutions no. why we solve the same problem so many different times so here let me explain in this way no. okay yeah our view, we take this view. Uh, all right. So a problem is a carrier of a set of thinking methods that result in different solutions. Here, let me explain in this way. Uh, what is our goal? Yeah. Our goal, we want to learn uh, here. If I write a goal, we want to learn problem solving techniques, right? That's our goal, right? Our main goal for this class, yeah, problem solving techniques for computing problems, right? So think about it. those techniques, their methods, there are special ways, you know, they, each one has one specific procedure, right? Step-by-step -step procedure or algorithm. We can call it algorithm. So each one has its own algorithm. But the question is, those algorithm mainly, so it is a thinking way, right? It is a thinking way. It is a not concrete object, right? It's not a concrete object, so you cannot grab it, okay? It's not concrete object. It's a thinking way in your brain, something in your brain, okay? Yeah. So the question, how to carry those different thinking ways for our future problem solving? Yeah. Because in our future real world problem solving, we need many algorithms. We need to use many tools. And these algorithms, we will use them as tools to solve real world computing problems. Yeah. But you need some carrier, right? You need some container. Yeah. You need to put these thinking, ways, methods, algorithms, techniques in some container. Yeah. Holding, holding these, you know, thinking methods. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we treat each computing problem 
as the scariot. Here, our sorting problem, here, sorting, our sorting problem is that carrier. And uh, for this class, we need to solve the sorting problem six times. So that means the sorting problem carries six different algorithms. That's the special view we take. Okay, yeah. All right. The thinking methods are important to help us solve other problems. No. Because after we learn these six algorithms, they belong to our experience, right? These six algorithms, they belong to our experience. And then later, in our real world applications, we have this experience. So when we have a new computing problem, so this kind of experience could be helpful for us to find a solution for the for a new real world computing problem. So that's the you know value of all these methods. Okay. Yeah, all right, yeah. A view based on special property. Now we need to solve this sorting problem in our second time. Yeah. Although I call it second time, but actually you did it before. <laughs> this problem, yeah. uh, you will see later, you solve it before in your CS2250, yeah. because I taught this class once before. Yeah. I taught this one, uh, you know. Yeah, so you will see it. All right. Yeah. Observation. Yeah. First, we need to find some special property. Yeah. Okay. You need to really do some good observation on your current computing problem. Try to discover some special property. Then your solution, you need to take advantage of this property, okay? Yeah. When we do observation, we need to find, because you may find many different properties. <laughs> you may find many different properties, okay? Yeah. For one solution here, we want to focus on one special property. Okay, all right, so let's look at that property. Yeah. Here, I just draw a simple diagram. Yeah. Using this diagram, we try to visually discover some special property. Okay, yeah. All right, so let's look at two pair of elements. Here, uh, I use, you know, this uh, two arrows uh, point to two elements. Yeah. All right. So think about when we sort all the elements in this array, what is the special property? Related to the order of these two elements, order, so order information, order, ascending order. We mean ascending order. Our default order meaning is ascending order, not descending order. Descending, not the default. So you have to say descending if you refer to descending. But for ascending, we do not need to say ascending. Just order, it is ordered, then ascending order, okay? All right, but here the question is, if these two elements out of order, not in order, out of order, okay? What would happen? Out of order, yeah. in order, in order, out of order, yeah. So you know the meaning, right? Yeah, so here, that's the property we want to discover. 
the critical property if the array is not solid yeah we make this assumption yeah a array not a solid assumption okay yeah then uh, there must be two adjacent elements here adjacent yeah here I look at two adjacent elements, okay? Then there must be two adjacent elements that are out of order. This is the property we discovered, okay? Can you understand this? Can you imagine, see this fact? Yeah, when I pointed it out, yeah, because you're thinking this way, if that is false okay so we use um so what's that Con counter positive counter positive uh, method right if it is false that means any pair of adjacent elements are in order okay any pair of adjacent elements are in order then the array must be sorted right well think in this way if if this statement is not true then we can say in this way if any pair of adjacent elements are not are in order yeah in order because we want to do the negation, right? We want to do that, the negation of this, you know, uh, conclusion part, conclusion part, negation, okay? Yeah. yeah. If any two adjacent elements are in order, then the whole array must be sorted. Yeah, so we, we see that, we can see that, all right? But here, we have assumption the array is not a sorted. That means that means your claim is false. Your claim, and that claim is, you know, any pair of adjacent elements are in order. That is false. If that is false, then there must be one pair of adjacent elements that are out of order, okay? That out of order, yeah, all right. So now, if we have this property, then we will just design an algorithm working on this property, targeting, targeting on this property, okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here I give you the reference on our textbook. Yeah. All right. Okay. Then to get it solved, we in order to facilitate our discussion, here we need to use a concept. Yeah. Concept. Inversion concept. Because if we give a formal description of this important concept, then when we do discussion, it is much easier. Because we do not need to say a lot of words. Okay? Yeah, inversion. All right. A pair of elements here, I look at a general pair of elements. A sub i and A sub j is called an inversion if the subscripts i less than j, but the values, element values, A sub i is greater than A sub j. So that's called inversion. Yeah. So why inversion? Because you look at the directions of the inequality signs opposite right not in the same direction in opposite direction okay 
when that happens, so we call this pair of elements, they form an inversion in this array. And you can understand why we need this concept because this concept just describes that out of order phenomena, okay? Out of order state, okay? Yeah. So we want to discuss based on out of order phenomena, okay? So we use this inversion concept for the discussion, okay? All right, yeah. after that, so then let us change the wording in our discussion. Let us use the inversion concept in our discussion from now on, okay? Yeah, all right. Now, yeah, so let us write this property another time. Okay, yeah. This time we will use the inversion concept. Okay? If the array is not solid, there must be an inversion. All right, so here, the second one is different from the, the above one. Yeah, so the second one. I just want to say related, but but not necessarily the same. Okay, just related, yeah. not the same. Okay, yeah. why not the same? Because in the above we mentioned the adjacent element. Here we do not. We just say arbitrary inversion, right? Yeah, because in our definition of the inversion, I, J, not necessary adjacent, right? Not necessary adjacent. Yeah, so here the meaning is different, okay? Yeah, so uh, we have this, you know, uh, slightly different property, okay? slightly different from the above. So if the array is not solid, there must be an inversion. It's also correct, okay? There must be inversion. Otherwise, think about it. If there is no inversion, think in this way. If there is no inversion in a given array, no inversion. Okay, then the array must be sorted. So, can you see that? If no inversion then array sorted. Okay, array sorted. Yeah, because no inversion. Okay, all elements must be in ascending order. That corresponds to no inversion case. Okay, yeah. because if you can find one inversion in the array, then the array, the elements in this array won't be in ascending order, right? Just, you need some intuition here, okay? You need some intuition. To get this point. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that is our first statement using this inversion concept. Another one. Yeah. Then we improve it. An, another version if the array is not sorted, okay, there must be an adjacent inversion. This time, we add that adjacent property for the inversion. The first time we do not add, add adjacent. The second time we add adjacent. Two versions. Both statements are correct. Okay. 
And the second statement, the same as our, you know, previous property we discovered. Okay. Yeah. All right. So here I write two different statements, but they are equivalent. Yeah. They are equivalent. Okay. Yeah. One, I do not say an adjacent. I do not say an adjacent inversion, so we can refer the inversion as global inversion. Global inversion. Here, at adjacent, yeah, at adjacent, we can refer it to local inversion. All right, so global local right yeah global local which one is easy yeah. remember when we did that uh greedy algorithm we use that local global views right local view global view. here we use this view another time local inversion global inversion yeah. when we work on this particular problem which way would be easier for us? Local view or global view? Local view, right? Local way easier. Local way every time you only consider two adjacent elements. Global view, you need to consider any two elements in the array too many choices local way much fewer choices okay yeah the number of choices much fewer yeah much easier all right yeah so here we take the local view local inversion all right yeah yeah so i i just say that okay all right how so here the problem here given an unordered array we need to sort it or we can say we need to fix the order problem right so because our goal we want to make this array in order sort it in order so we treat out of order behavior as a problem so we want to fix the problem okay how to fix the problem? We just want to fix an adjacent inversion. Think about that. Can we eliminate an adjacent inversion? All the adjacent inversions we want to eliminate. That's the view. That's the special view for this new solution. Okay, think about that. All right. All right, so now, how to fix it? Swap operation. Yeah, so you're familiar with swap operation, right? Swap the values of these two elements, okay? When you do one swap operation on one inversion, can you fix it? Then it won't be inversion anymore, right? You swap two values, for a pair of elements if they form an inversion after the swap operation there won't be an inversion right yeah so you eliminate one inversion in this way by the swap operation okay then after that you can say we can eliminate all inversions using the swap operations okay yeah. now the algorithm is pretty much there almost there yeah the main idea of this algorithm is there okay yeah all right so let me describe the implementation idea okay. all right Remove all the local inversions by local swaps. 
you swap two adjacent elements. So that's the local swap operations, not global swap operations. Okay, all right. Yeah, so the procedure like this. You start from the first element for each scan. So you scan the whole array from left to right. All right. Do swap one by one from left to right, if necessary. Here you have to put this if necessary. Because if there is no inversion, you do not do any swap. So if necessary. Okay. Only when you detect a, an inversion, then you do swap operation. Okay. All right. Yeah, if necessary. Yeah. I have it. Okay. Stop at the first in place element. What's the meaning of this third step? Stop at the first in place element. In, you know the concept in place, right? No. Because we need to do multiple scans. One scan won't get the, the whole array sorted, right? Think about it. One scan won't get the whole array sorted. Okay. Yeah. So you still, you have some out of order elements, one scan. But one scan, you can guarantee the last element in, is in place. Yeah. So when you do swap two other JSON elements, eventually you, you can imagine you will put the maximum in place. Yeah. Put max in place. Right? So the next time you do not need to touch that max. You already put it in place. So, so you stop before you hit that max. So that's why stop at at the first in place element. Yeah. When you hit the, the first in place element, you should stop. Okay. Because they're already in place. Don't touch them. Okay. Yeah. So that's the meaning of step number three. Yeah. All, right. All right. So now, then we have the whole solution. Yeah. Yeah. So we observe the property for this solution. Yeah. There is one element in place for every scan. Every time we put one, at least one element in place. Okay. Yeah. Then after n minus one times, we put all elements in place. Right. Yeah. So the in place element of each scan appears at the end of the current array. Yeah. At the end of current array. Okay because we do local swaps, okay? The largest element in the current array will be swapped to the end of the current array. And that is in place, okay? Yeah. Then the current array is a subarray that excludes all the in place elements. Yeah, because you may ask me, what's the meaning of current array? The meaning of current array, so the subarray of the original array, yeah. but that includes all the in place elements. In place, we do not want to touch them. Okay, so we leave them alone. We do not want to touch them. Yeah. So that we only consider the current array. Okay, then your scan on the current array, you will put the maximum of the current array at the end of the current array. So that is the behavior of this method. Okay, yeah. So after the discussion, now we can get a visual imagination, you know, visually, yeah, yeah. We understand visually, yeah. The swab looks like a bubble moving to the right, right? 
yeah? moving bubbles from left to right. Yeah? So that's why people call it bubble salt. Yeah? So that's why at the beginning I mentioned, you learned this before in CS 2250, because the bubble salt appears in CS 2250, okay? Bubble salt. Yeah. At that time, so you just did a simple algorithm, you know, solve the problem, okay? As a programming example at that time. At, right. Here, we look at it from the algorithm point of view. So this time, we learn more than the first time. Okay, yeah, all right. Now, the efficiency analysis is similar to that of the selection sort. Yeah, you have N minus one scans, right? Selection sort, we also, we have N minus one scans. Yeah. Each scan, we process subarray with one element fewer than the previous one. Yeah. Similar pattern, yeah, so this one and a selection sort. Yeah. All right, so then the analysis pretty much the same. Yeah. In selection sort, we did that analysis. Yeah. So here we can skip that because we basically, we just do the similar analysis as we did in the selection sort, okay? All right. Then the question, what is the basic operation? We learn this concept, basic operation. When we do the counting, we count the basic operation, right? Yeah. Here, there are two operations we can consider. One comparison, right? In order to check if two adjacent elements form an inversion or not, you need to do a comparison, right? So comparison is one operation you need to consider another is swap operation okay yeah comparison or swap which one yeah the answer is comparison not swap why because you apply the comparison on all local pairs are the adjacent pairs every time you take adjacent pair pair you apply comparison operation but you may not apply swap operation on the JSON pair because if you do not detect inversions, yeah, if, if they do not form inversions, so you do not apply swap operations. Yeah. So for that reason, comparison is more basic than swap. Okay, yeah. think about if your array is already sorted, then you won't need to do any swap operation, right? Already in order. You do not need to fix any inversion. There is no inversion in the array. So you do not need to apply any swap operation, zero swap operation, okay? For that extremal case example, yeah. so you can understand comparison is more fundamental than the swap operation here, okay? All right, uh, so we spend a lot of time uh, on this second solution uh, and we complete this topic and